it seems more and more in the media and in the news we're hearing about the inefficiencies of meat production and why meat production isn't the way to go but instead we should go straight to plant-based proteins as a way to save our planet and I want to talk about why that isn't true and why the inefficiencies of meat production are actually key to our long-term ecological health. When we're talking about the inefficiencies of meat production, we're really talking about how much of a food we're using to feed an animal which then we eat. So, for example, chickens take 2.5 pounds of grain to make one pound of chicken. So, for every 2.5 pounds of grain that that chicken eats, we end up with one pound of meat. Pigs take 3.5 pounds of grain for one pound of pork. And cows are the most inefficient with six pounds of grain for one pound of beef. So what about grass? Chickens can only eat 20% of their diet of grass. So the other 80% has to be made up of grains. Pigs can eat 50% of their diet, grass and other greenery. So the other 50% still has to be made up of grains. Now cows can eat 100% of their diet on grass. The problem with that is that grass takes 7 to 25 pounds of grass to produce one pound of beef. So now all of a sudden grain looks really good because it only takes 6 pounds to produce one pound of beef. So if grains are so much more efficient and pigs and chickens actually need them to grow properly, what's wrong with using grains all the time? Well, I've got three problems with using grains. Erosion, depletion, and chemicals. Half of the Earth's topsoil has eroded away in the last 150 years. We're losing all kinds of topsoil. So we need to be able to keep that. And the problem with grains are that they're annual plants, which means that they grow new every single year. As we grow them and then harvest them, that leaves the ground bare and their root systems don't stay permanently and keep the ground in place. So as water comes down, it hits the bare ground and the root systems aren't holding it in place and so it can wash it away. That's why erosion is such a huge problem, especially over the last 150 years. Depletion happens because every year those plants are taking some proteins and nutrients out of the soil, which then over time depletes all of the nutrients in the soil and so in order to combat that we end up putting chemical fertilizers into the soil to provide nutrients well every year you need more chemical fertilizers because the other nutrients the natural nutrients get less and less so you got to keep putting more and more chemicals in the ground and we're seeing that that is not a good thing for long-term health you can't have just chemical soil because that doesn't grow plants properly and they're not nutritious the other kind of plant, of course, are perennials, and they come back every year, so grasses and trees and stuff like that. And so, as their root system stays there every year and their foliage stays there, the rain coming down hits the foliage as slowed before it hits bare dirt, and then as it runs, the root system keeps the soil in place and keeps it from eroding and being taken away with the water. So here's where the inefficiencies of cattle production and meat production come in really important. Because in a grass-based production system, as a cow eats 7 to 25 pounds of grass to produce one pound of meat, some of that grass goes to bones and skin, and the rest of it comes out the other end as fertilizer. Now that builds the topsoil and builds nutrients instead of taking away. And so as we have those perennials there holding the ground in place and the cattle on there that are building the nutrients we can start to replace and replenish some of that topsoil that we've lost and really reverse the negative cycle that we've been building by using annual plants and extensive uh, farming techniques. So what about annuals? Well, we need them. We need grains, we need all the vegetables and stuff that grow on an annual basis. The problem comes when we start mass producing them and never rotating where we produce them. So we need to rotate it and let the fertility build back again by planting perennials and having cattle and stuff on there that will build the fertility back up. And so if we can rotate 
what we put where around, we can actually build topsoil and build our fertility back up instead of trying to always replace that natural nutrients source with a chemical source that isn't sustainable in the long term. When we think of inefficiencies in meat production, we're thinking of waste, stuff that's going to waste. Well, the truth is that nothing on this is going to waste because the plant, the cow eats the grass, it's not producing all of that, turning all of that into meat, but it's turning all of that into either meat or other animal protein, bone, skin, intestines, whatever, that can then be turned back into uh, compost and put back in the soil, or it's coming out the other end as fertilizer, which then goes straight into the soil and actually builds the nutrients back up. So none of this is going to waste, it's just not going straight into meat. So an inefficiency is just creating a byproduct that then returns itself and is actually beneficial to the entire system. I hope I've been able to somewhat explain why animals are so important and vital to agriculture and the long-term sustainability of agriculture. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And thanks for watching.